all the things that make a great teacher also make great leaders. Encouragement, adaptability, kindness, care. Our guest today, Lisa Colum, is a former teacher who has built a multi-million dollar curriculum company, Top Score Writing Incorporated. Using all those skills she used to use in the classroom to now drive a great culture. Lisa Colum, welcome to How I Turned the Corner. Yes, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. So tell us a little bit more about your company and the origins of it. Yeah, so I'm the author and owner of Top Score Writing. So I was a public school teacher for 10 years. Um, I started about 19 and a half years ago, and I was thrown into teaching writing, and I saw right away that there wasn't curriculum for writing specifically. There was reading, math, science, and a little bit of writing here and there, but nothing as a writing teacher I could use. So um, that's where it really all started. For about the 10 years I taught, it was all just ideas and strategies that I had written down. But I did really well. I was at the lowest school in my county, and I got all the students to pass the state writing test two years in a row. So I was actually investigated by the Department of Education both years, um, which at the time sounded crazy, but it ended up being a good thing because it kind of put out there like, what I was doing was working. Um, And so after about 10 years of teaching and being able to help other teachers in other schools, I left my district to go teach online. And that's when it all started. Everyone said, where'd you go? You you have to still help us. And I was like, no, I I I was thinking I was on baby number three. And I was like, I'm working from home online. And they were like, can you just write it down and we'll buy it? And I kind of laughed because I'm not a business person. I'm a hundred percent educator. And um, I ended up after lots of emails and phone calls and people showing up my doorstep begging me, I wrote it all down and started out with about 20 lessons in a binder and did that while working full time for four years. And then it just started growing so much. I ended up having to quit my full-time job. And I mean, I started on my living room floor making binders with my kids and my husband um, and now have grown into a nationwide company. I have second through 12th grade. I have books instead of binders. I'm not on my living room floor anymore. Um, <laughs> and now I get to work with, you know, thousands of teachers. So it's pretty awesome how I, what I started in my classroom, and I, got, I now get to share with teachers and students across the nation. That's incredible. That's such a great story. So, so how has it been for you then going from kind of a classroom setting to being a a leader and, you know, what have been some of the things that you've, you've, you know, really where you've leaned on your skills and maybe where you've also had a couple of blind spots? Yeah. So I think, you know, as a teacher, you're pretty, um, an organized person, you know, you, you know, I'm used to teaching others. And so even in my business, I'm still teaching because I'm either working with students or I'm teaching teachers how to use my curriculum. So I definitely had a lot of those skills. I think the hardest part for me were the business skills of it. Um, I'm in year 12 and I still I still feel like I'm learning. Um, but I mean, I Googled everything from how to start a business in Florida to how to create a purchase order to how to do an invoice. I mean, I literally learned everything along the way. So that was definitely the hardest part me was the business side. Um, But as far as like writing the lessons and and getting it to teachers and and delivering it to them in a presentation or going out working with students, that was those skills. That's my forte. So that was the easy part for me. Mm -hmm. So how big is your team now, including part-time people? I mean, just everyone who supports the organization. Yeah. So I'm about 25 people, um, but I have five full-time and the rest are teachers in the classroom that work part-time for me. So they're doing projects and we do lots of videos and tutoring, um, curriculum writing, things like that. So I've always like 95% of my team are educators that have either used my program or are currently using it. And so I love that aspect of it because I love teachers um, to be able to bring them on my team and, and they get to do what they love during the day. And then they get to have this as kind of their side thing. And, and they love curriculum writing and working with top score writing. So it works out on both sides. Mm-hmm. So how would you describe yourself as a leader? Um, so I'm pretty, I, I want to say I'm the fun boss. I'm very, very nice, which can be a flaw sometimes. I've learned, but one thing I've learned over the years is I think I'm just naive in a sense where I think everyone's just like me. We're all nice and friendly and we can hang out and I'm going to be best friends with everyone. And that doesn't always work as a leader, right? I, I 
have found that eventually grows to that. Most of my team members are my very good friends, but that's just not the way it is in a business. And I've learned along the way that sometimes people don't listen until you're mean. And I hate that about being a leader, but um, sometimes you just got to come in with that kind of, you know, sharp and you mean business kind of attitude and um, when things aren't going the way they need to go. But overall, I am probably the most easygoing, flexible boss anyone's ever had for sure. And it goes back to, I think, my boss as a principal when, when I was a teacher was like that with me. She was very nice, did not micromanage, let me do my thing. And I felt like I worked 10 times harder because she was that way with me. Um, and I you know, she was very much anything for my family, my kids. If I needed to do this, she was very flexible and she did so much for me on that side. I just felt like I was always working harder. And so I try to be that with my team. And have you seen the good results with that? I have. And I'm like, my biggest thing is I'm a mom. I have four kids. I'm running this business. I also own a school and I know we, you know, no matter what the business is, family comes first. And so that's always been my thing with my, my employees is family comes first. I'm also very flexible, but I also, um, I've learned that most people will go in above and beyond. Some people will take advantage of that if you're a little too flexible, but that's where you find the right people, right? You you find the right people, you treat the right people, right. And then they end up, you know, doing their job and usually above and beyond. So it it definitely has worked out, but it's not, you know, it's not always a hundred percent of the time with every employee. That's for sure. No, you're dealing with people. People yeah. are always going to present problems and issues that you weren't really expecting. But um, yeah. it's interesting. We're really similar, Lisa, and that um, our values at Turning the Corner are also the same. So our first value is family first. And how that shows up for us is, you know, providing as much flexibility as people need. And so, I mean, right now, I have no idea where anyone on my team is, and I'm totally fine with that. So, I mean, one gal I think is in Mexico right now, even working in Mexico, but as long as they're getting the results, which is, by the way, our second value is results beyond expectations, then I don't really think it needs to be micromanaged. And so I I really appreciate what you said. I think people want to be treated like a grown up. That's it. And so, and when you treat them like that, they're going to, like you had when you were a teacher, you're going to give it their all. Yeah. And most people respond well to that. Most people do do that. And I think for the most part, it does work out. Just, you know, depends on the person, obviously, but um, I've just found I'm I'm the same way. We're all remote. Um, We come together for meetings, um, you know, weekly or biweekly, but I'm very flexible to that. Just get your job done. And everyone you know, I feel like even though we're remote and we're not all working in that nine to five, everyone's doing above and beyond. And mm-hmm. just, as long as you do your job, I don't care if you do it in four hours. I'm not worried mm-hmm. about your hours. <laughs> yeah, I know. Me neither. I don't care yeah. at all. So we started our businesses the same year too. So I'm, I'm 12, my business is 12 years old as well. Mm-hmm. So um, what was it? So what have you noticed? It's different. Were you guys all remote before COVID as well? Yeah. So we've always been remote. Um, Now in my other business, which I own a nonprofit private school, that's totally different. We are in, we're in school all the time. I'm not there on a daily basis, but that one's in school, but top score writing has always been remote um, before COVID. I mean, I feel like we have so many more tools now, which is awesome. And we've also grown a lot. So we, you know, I was alone for the first six years, brought on one person, you know, now have all these people. So it's always, I think remote just work for us in that sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We've always been, um, we called it, I guess in those days, we called it core hours and flexible hours. Now you would say that would be a hybrid environment, I guess, but. uh, (laughs) Official name. Yeah, exactly. So, so what do you do as a leader to kind of keep up with trends and continue to grow? What are some of your resources? You know, I don't, I definitely have, people like on social media that I follow other leaders. I think that's really important. I I love social media in that sense is that I can kind of get an insight on what other leaders are doing. And it's not even in my specific, um, you know, category of my business. Like for instance, there's a realtor that I follow and she's amazing. And yesterday she had a team meeting, they were out on a boat and they were having like their court, their, their 
quarterly meeting and she had them fill out workbooks of their goals and their vision for the next quarter. And, and I was like, what a cool idea. Like you're setting your goals, your vision, you took them out on the water. And I just, it's, it's little things like that, that I think is so cool at social media. When you, you know, I don't follow people just to follow people. I follow people for a reason. Sometimes it's for a clothing discount, but other times it's a lot of business leaders. So I think that's one thing. And the other thing is I'm in a lot of networking groups with other CEOs and other business leaders. Um, And so from there too, just in that simple networking of talking to other leaders, um, that's another place that I get a lot of my ideas, just the, the trends of what, you know, other leaders are doing, what's working, what's not working. It's also nice sometimes just to vent with another leader and hear, okay, yeah, that's not working for me. Either you, okay, I'm not going crazy. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and then I'm big on communication. Like, I feel like I always, I'll have something great that's working and then years pass and it's not working anymore. And so I'm just open to knowing that depends on who's on my team and, you know, just the communicating with them of what works best. We're even to the point now, I'll be honest with my team, we're all remote, but we've decided we need an office that we can come into once a week. We've all decided that. And that came from the last year of every time we would come together, which was just like once a month, all of us, because we're all over the place, we would get more in that meeting done than two weeks on Zoom. It was crazy just like being there together. And that's what we needed because we're doing a lot of curriculum writing and editing and we weren't really communicating over Zoom. It's easy to be right in front of people with the paper. So we've all, through hearing from my team, I know I need an office. So I've already been on the lookout to have an office that we can meet in weekly. So that just comes from, you know, them communicating that with me and me listening to their needs. Mm -hmm. Yes, another great quality of a teacher, right? Listening for (laughs) what's needed. (laughs) For sure. That's excellent. So, so what are some of the things that right now are, are struggles? Like what are the things that are keeping you up at night with the business? I mean, for me, uh, uh, in my business, um, my biggest thing, I mean, if it's, this isn't really employee wise, but it's just growing in general. Um, you know, I'm, I'm to some people, Lisa, who started on her living room floor still. And so a lot of teachers that have known me, I have to, I'm much bigger now. So I'm like, I'm not just Lisa anymore. I have a whole team. I'm nationwide. And so I'm trying to get these big district deals and come in as a company. So for me, it's just getting in front of people. Um, I had a great meeting today with a county. Um, and so it's just once I'm in front of other teachers in schools, it's never a hard sell. It's just getting out there. And I still am small when it comes to my company size. So I know that I need more people to grow. And so that's and the hardest part for me is we're so like we're moving so fast. The school year's almost here. I don't have time to hire someone brand new, train them and have them ready in two weeks to go out to school. So I'm, you know, I'm trying to find teachers or people that want to work part-time, full-time and, and that know the program. And so I'm in this kind of place right now where I know I need more people to grow, but I've got to find those people and we've got to find, make sure it's in the budget and things like that. So I'm kind of in this weird limbo place. So I know that we'll see more growth and, and positions and money-wise um, come this school year because we have so many new products. Mm-hmm. So you're looking for people then who are former teachers or current teachers and have experienced some part of your curriculum in the yep. past because it'll be easier to train. What else do you look for in people? I guess my biggest thing is just people that are easy to work with others. Let's put it that way. I need people that are going to be able to come in as a team. This isn't a, I did this, you did this, you know, um, we all, everything is collaborative. So everything we do, even when a sale is made in the end, it took five or six people for it to go through. And so I need someone who's going to come in and be a team player. Um, Someone that is just, or I'm a very positive person. And I I try to put that on my team is even if we like, and this happened, we lost a big deal one time off a crazy contract and something crazy that happened. And they all looked at me and they're like, are you mad? And I'm like, nope. I'm like, it is what it is. We're going to move on to the next one. And they're like, are you sure? And I was like, yep. And then they all turn. And so they saw me and then they did that. So I think it's just, we try to keep a positive vibe, team player, um, people that are going to get the mission. That's my other thing. Like my whole goal here is to help teachers and students in as many schools as we can. And I need to know they get that mission. This isn't just a job to have a job, go out and hand out papers. We want to make sure these teachers feel supported and these students are being successful. So that's one of my, my biggest things that I look for when I'm interviewing people. Mm -hmm. That's great. 
Yeah, this can be, um, it can be very helpful to get really clear on that in, you know, every way, all the different ways you advertise the job, as well as the way you interview on board, <clears throat> all of those various pieces can help a lot when you get clear on what you're, what you're looking for. Excuse me. <clears throat> so, well, that's excellent. So, so um, are you hiring teachers right now for your school as well? Yeah. So my school is a nonprofit in my local community. And so we're very small. Um, I have about six teachers. We stay small for a reason because the students that are coming to us are struggling in their normal school. So they come to us for something. I would say they just need something different, whatever that may be. And so, you know, right now is not a good time for teaching. Um, everyone's leaving the, you know, the education system, everyone's, you know, every great teacher I know has left. They say they're frustrated, they're tired, they're not making enough money. They, you know, the parents, whatever it is. And so it's a really hard time in education. And I've got this small school and yeah, I, I'm hiring another teacher. We've grew from three teachers to four to five to six, and now we're hiring another one come this fall. So that's a, a really hard thing for me because, I can't offer what public schools offer. We're a small nonprofit. It's truly about the mission at my school. So when I tell you, I come up with everything possible to make them happy because teaching is never going to be someone's coming there for the money, right? Teaching is always because you enjoy going there. And so that's a whole nother battle with, with that business is keeping them happy more than ever. Teaching's always been a hard place to hire people, but now why teach, right? You can go work at target and make the same amount for most people, you know, it's, it's comes down to the amount of hours and all that. So that's, that's a, a constant struggle, but I think I, I luckily have had the experience as a teacher and what my principal did that I loved. And I've taken those things. And I think it's good. I have that insight. I've been there. I've been in your shoes. Here's what I can do to make it a better place for you to come to every day for work. Mm, that's great. Well, I think that's a perfect spot to stop. So thank you so much for sharing your experience and sharing your background. I really appreciate it. Yes, of course. Of course. It was so nice to meet you. You as well, Lisa.